And I think entrepreneurial initiatives are a big topic. I think one central thing is to become um, community musicians, to become teaching artists and to become connected to communities, different communities, and to um, have a vision of uh, serving those communities and enabling experiences uh, for, those, uh, for those communities. Conducting the Future. Our interview series starts from the question which ecological, political or social responsibilities conductors see included in their work today. In how far has a conductor's engagement changed since Herbert von Karajan's era and how do conductors of today see the future of their profession? Can the answer to all be found in the music or is that a naive attempt? From what point in one's career is a conductor in the position or even has the responsibility to influence our society? Conducting the future. Um, Etienne Abela, we are here about conducting the future. So what is your perspective for the profession of the conductor for the future? <laughs> That's a big, a big question. I, uh, my impression is that the, the role of a conductor is changing. And uh, in a way, I guess in a way that happens in each time period. Each time period, I, I uh, suppose, is kind of a laboratory for what is to come. And uh, since society changes a lot, the goals of society change. Um, uh, technical dimensions of, of how, how arts and music are perceived um, change the context enormously. And, and uh, so I think, I think the role of, of conductors is, is changing rapidly. Um, how is a, is a big question, and, and I hope we're, we're getting into this in, in this conversation. Yeah, actually, the how is a, is a big thing. So um, a conductor is also is a leader, of course, of a music group um, and in fact is uh, a leader of society or can be a leader of society. So what um, and how far is um something like opinions, political, uh, social, uh, economical, whatever um, attempts of a conductor. And how far is it your understanding that a conductor has to be clear in his view and show this uh, not only to the audience, but to the public, because usually a conductor stands for one orchestra. Yes, I, I think I do think the conductors position themselves these days and, and wonder about about these questions if they should come forward with with uh, with his or her view there's there's a there's fortunately an increasing number of, of women conductors um, active active these days um, one of the things one of the things that I would I would say yes uh, conductors are leaders but they're also facilitators and I, I believe, um, uh, artists in general, musicians in general, are becoming leaders, and I and I think one one of the roles of the conductor is to um, level the field a little bit and bring musicians along to become leaders as as well. Um, a bit flatten the hierarchy. Of course, uh, uh, a conductor figure. Uh, there's a lot of potential in in highlighting the. the the uh, um, the role of, of of the conducting but but i would not forget about uh, how musicians are are also challenged in these times to step up to uh, to become leaders in very different ways so i i see both conductor and and uh, um, instrumentalists and singers as as uh, curators of experiences of a variety of people hosts of uh, uh, the experience of a variety of, of groups and so the, the, the skill set and the communication set and the interpersonal connection uh, capacities um, of conductors and of all other musicians uh, um, are increasingly uh, broadening. And, and so I, I would first of all highlight that, that I, I believe the, the role of the conductor as the leader uh, um, is, is changing and I think I think in a good way and I, I do think the more one can facilitate and empower uh, everybody around uh, the, the better the better uh, 
the direction will be that we go into. Your website says musician, but also cultural manager. So um, in fact, the managing aspect of a conductor is important as well. Not only this is the orchestra, here's the conductor, uh, but also developing your own musical group in a way. Um, and that leads to uh, inventing orchestras or uh, inventing new groups of musicians that form as yeah well performing groups but not necessarily in the old understanding of an orchestra and how far um, does that have to open in how far is that not a question at all and then how far does it have to be transported that this is the future not only orchestra as a fixed group but as a fluent group Yes, uh, um, no, that is definitely a thing, and and uh, and I think entrepreneurial initiatives are a big topic. We have we have now seen, by the way, in this pandemic, a wonderful uh, um, amount of initiatives uh, by colleagues of mine who um, started caring for the community of conductors and actually discussing with uh, with conductors and uh, and um, creating spaces of of. Uh, of exchange with conductors, which again is very much in this cooperative spirit uh, that that I think that I think is is crucial. And uh, one of the things that that uh, is being discussed is is this uh, the topic of of being entrepreneurial, looking for being, uh, let's say, research and development, uh, um, be it inside an organization or or outside an organization, in founding new groups, which, as you say, are are often not anymore uh, uh, the, the same type of groups that that there were in the past, um, but that that adapt to uh, to society's needs. I think one central thing is to become um, community musicians, to become teaching artists, and to become connected to communities, different communities, and to um, have a vision of uh, serving those communities and enabling experiences uh, for those uh, for those communities and what can lead in that are, are a variety of things uh, one might for example look at the un's social development goals to have an idea of what society wants and where society wants to go to um, and then the question is okay how can we help in this as as musicians be it conductors or or, uh, or non-conductors um, and that actually it goes goes back to what you asked before about politics. I think, um, of course, taking a stand as as musicians and and uh, and being clear of where one is and what the values are is is essential. Um, at the same time, I also see a potential of taking a step back and enabling spaces of experience of all sorts of people. Um, also with other opinions or with with uh, with other intuitions and to um, enable connections um, that are in a way behind uh, the the, the uh, sort of day-to-day -day political uh, um, um, con controversies not saying that it's not important to take to take a stand again but I think there's a potential to take a step back also and to focus on larger things like these uh, UN uh, social development goals um, to sort of um, become leaders in in, a, in in almost a meta way, and uh, I, th I think I think that's important, and I think I think there's a lot of potential in the arts in in being a healer in in today's very fractured society. Let's put it more precise, because uh, as an as a conductor, you, you don't necessarily um, are say aiming for the audiences uh, of course you are in a way but through the musicians but you're aiming for um, musicians that get fair chances equal chances uh, all over the place and this is leading actually to your uh, concept of uh, El Sistema in Europe uh, we know El Sistema from uh, Venezuela You've co-founded a group like this uh, in Europe, um, but with what goals and what um, uh, responsibilities also for the for the society again? Yes, and that touches the field of music education and what is um, a 
progressive music education. And uh, um, just to clarify, I did uh, help co-found uh, um, a project in Switzerland, and then um, I helped co-found the Sistema Europe Youth Orchestra, which is, I would say, is one of those entrepreneurial type uh, initiatives, because both, both of these are. Um, but there are many, many projects around Europe that do uh, fantastic work in, in, in this field, in, in uh, um, many of the, of the European countries. And uh, Sistema Europe is, is, is a bit of an umbrella organization, uh, um, taking, uh, coordinating certain things and organizing this, uh, this Sistema Europe uh, uh, Youth Orchestra. And I'm very happy to be part of all this, because the exciting thing is here, um, what happens in education? And how can um, uh, music, and specifically here in this in this context, orchestra music, orchestra playing, um, contribute to to emotional musical literacy of of a of a young of a young generation, and um, um, the potential there I, I see, and, and and the Sistema approach actually is really brings some new elements and and. In different countries and different societies, those novelties are different things. Um, here in Switzerland, uh, the music teaching system is very much focused on individual lessons, um, whereas the, the Sistema-inspired approach spends more time during the week and mostly in groups. So it's more a social experience of learning music. And that, apart from all the, the, uh, the dimension of uh, addressing inequalities, is already uh, innovative in, in, in the context of, of, uh, of the education system around here. And I think for orchestras to engage, also for uh, professional orchestras to engage with this is, uh, is, is really important. Again, this is a new approach to the professional for conductor, not uh, one to the group, which is a group of individuals, but one to a body and or rather a community which includes the conductor. So um, this social aspect of music making, which has always been there, uh, but not um, really focused on, um, is that new or is that better or is that adding on to what we know from Karajan's days, the direct uh, focus of a maestro to the orchestra and the orchestra then speaking the maestro's language. Yeah, I, I think I think the attitude toward toward uh, hierarchy and toward leadership has has changed. Maybe one could call it from transactional, someone leading and some some people sort of reacting to transformational, where one is more a catalyst and uh, and. That, that, I think, has changed, although one, one has to say that, that uh, in the history of conducting, that, that approach of, of, uh, of, a, of, of a flatter hierarchy and more transformational and, and more enabling musicians than, than actually you know, dictate them has a long tradition. Also. And, and uh, uh, Bruno Walter is a figure who, who, is known, who was known for being basically in that area. So, I would say many many of the the impulses that we that we have today and that we we try to strengthen um, also have a, a historical uh, component. And and regarding another part of your question, I think in many ways it's also about make being starting to become aware what orchestra playing is and, and how it can be. Um, Something that is that is that is uh, that can inspire society of how to cooperate, and to to make that aware um, can can absolutely be a task of uh, of musicians and, and conductors uh, these these days. Also with technical means, and there have been some some great projects already, and I think I think that uh, can uh, continue. How to uh, integrate the possibilities of the digital world uh, to uh, to this task and um, your approach is also to bring forward uh, the view of on classical music um, to open this to the future is that um, how can you do that without watering the value down i think there are different dimensions of of uh, quality and different dimensions of of excellency and um uh, 
uh, I think the one you're referring to um, of of uh, of watering down certain certain qualities is is one of those dimensions that uh, that of course it's important to uh, to to uphold and, and to to be very strong about. There are other there are other uh, ex uh, dimensions of excellency. For example, who can create the best point of entries for certain groups of audience. And, and that's a whole different dimension of, of, uh, of where one can be excellent or less excellent and whether one can, one can establish a promising practice and, and look and see who, who does those things uh, best or who, who is most engaged in, uh, in involving young, young people and, and, uh, uh, in their organization or in, in the way of, of, uh, of of uh, doing music or um, who is most successful in, in helping reduce inequalities or, or helping building all sorts of communities. And I think, I think those are, those are uh, different types of dimensions, which sometimes I don't mind having a, a bit of a trade-off to be, to be honest, you know, if, uh, if going, you know, uh, starting to, to create these incredible points of entries to, uh, to people means, slight compromises in other fields i i don't personally mind that all all too much if it's not if it's not too much um but i think those are different uh, dimensions and and i think I, I don't think it's uh it's helpful to think of that all as being sort of second place to this one uh, dimension of of quality i think uh, qualities uh, have, have very different different aspects to them I think we're coming back to the managing um, issue of all of this because um, you sort of have to do everything at the same time, concentrate on increasing the quality, concentrate on not uh, letting go of young talents, um, concentrate on networking and all this at the same time. So how do you, would you say one has to set priorities in this? Uh, yeah, that's. I think that's a really good question, and I think I think from from year to year and from moment to moment, those that uh, that has to be answered differently. I think now, after all all that happened in the summer, it's a moment of reckoning for the whole field with with issues of diversity, and uh, you know how how can we program in in a way that does justice to to what is being discussed in society? How can we hire in a way? Uh, uh, how how can how how is how can res representation work in a in a way that 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 is progressive? Um, so I think with shifting years and shifting times, uh, the answer of pri prioritizing uh, can be can be given in in, in, in different ways. It has to do with how society go uh, works, what what is being regarded as important, and of course we co shape that. But uh, it, we also it's also important to listen and to see what is going on in communities, but also in, in, in larger in, in larger parts of society. Coming back to the core question, what will the future bring? Nobody can say, of course, but uh, what do you wish the future of the conducting job to be or to open to? I believe, I believe uh, um, conductors can even more become community leaders. And uh, um, there has been a lot of discussion about music directors of orchestras being sort of an outdated uh, model because there's, there's a lot of traveling. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure it doesn't also go the other way these days. Because of the pandemic, there has been less traveling. There's an increasing awareness of issues of climate change in, uh, with, involved with, with, with extensive traveling. Um, but also the awareness that um, um, we and, or, and, and all organizations have a task to connect to, to the community and to, to different parts of the community. And uh, that is best done by, by, uh, uh, by music directors and conductors who are, in, who are locally active and who are, uh, um, and also uh, instrumentalists, uh, singers, uh, soloists um, who, who are local and who, who, uh, who, who are there, who are actually there and not traveling around and, uh, all, all the time. So I think that's that's something that's that's uh, that's happening, and then I think the skill set for community leaders uh, is expansive. I think uh, expanding. Uh, it's important that we learn to um, 
feel the room and be able to connect with a variety of groups of people and to uh, enter partnerships um, um, across all sorts of, uh, to build bridges across all sorts of, of, uh, of, uh, of valleys, uh, also other, other musical genres. Um, so I think that's something that, that uh, is happening that, and that can increasingly happen. And the other thing is, is digital, this hybrid of digital and, and, uh, and live. Um, and of course, during the pandemic, um, there's been, there's been a, a lot of focus on, on what digital can do. And I think, I think the future will bring a lot more. I, this, this project I'm involved in with music visualizations, uh, music eyes, um, is very much in the digital world, but also in, this, in the digital uh, hybrid life world. And uh, we've done some, some uh, projects that, uh, that were uh, already basically pilot, pilot projects in a way where you have students creating music visualizations over either a matter of days or a matter of weeks, um, and then uh, facilitated by um, um, by by us in, in the team, uh, we we make that possible, and then and then we feature those those student animations um, in live performances, which again can be digitally transmitted, and uh, there can be audience interaction. That's another big uh, big field which which can come in, and um, yeah, one vision for us uh, with with uh, with these music visualizations is I imagine uh, live performances with with augmented reality. I imagine augmented experiences, um, both digitally, um, sitting at home and and live. The hardware of augmented reality is is not quite there uh, there yet, um, if I understand that right. Um, but uh, I think it will get there. There will be, I think, uh, part of that vision would be a gamification that we uh, are able to address uh, the people with game elements, even in our beloved uh, long form uh, symphony movements, um, with audience interaction, with interaction uh, um, um, involving musicians, and of course, um, you know, a lot of new new music and new new music of all types of, of uh, styles that that uh, play into play into this. That that would be a vision that I have, especially for a hybrid of digital and, and live. It's a very exciting vision and um, we're hoping to meet it very soon. Thank you so much for the interview. Big, big pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.